What's up guys, it's everyone's favorite Campy T here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to bore sight your AR-15. It doesn't matter if you have a red dot, a prismatic optic, or a telescopic rifle scope on your AR-15, the process is generally the same. I'd like to start off by putting something in perspective for you guys. My videos are not monetized. I am considering starting a Patreon to help support my channel uh, so that I can get better videos out to you guys and things like that. But the reason that I make these videos is because I love the shooting sports. I love the Second Amendment. And I love the people within the shooting community for the most part. And one of the things that I loathe is misinformation, bad information that gets spread like wildfire or the my grandpappy taught me this so it must be right mindset. I'm going to tell you guys a little story. As many of you know, I've been in the army for 15 years. I've been a competitive shooter for almost as long. And I have dedicated a good portion of my life to studying ballistics, marksmanship, how firearms work, things that I'm passionate about. So whenever I give people advice for free, know that I've invested a lot of time, energy, and effort into giving you guys the appropriate and proper information. Some people, believe it or not, don't like me. And that's okay. When I am spouting off my free information that I'm giving you, it's because I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to make you better, and I'm trying to stop the spread of misinformation within the community. And that has carried over both on the civilian shooting side and the military side. So here's the actual story. There was a group of soldiers that were about to go and shoot the Army's rifle qualification. It's not a hard qualification. It's pop-up targets out to 300 meters and fired from various uh, supported and one unsupported position. One shot is actually unsupported. It's at 50 meters and it's your first shot from standing. It's not a hard shot. None of the Army's rifle qual is difficult. Before you shoot the U.S. Army rifle qualification, you go to the zero range and make sure that your rifle, ammunition, and optic are all zeroed to each other. I started to explain to these soldiers the ballistic offset required for M855 Alpha 1 ammunition and M4 with a 14 and a half inch barrel. And I even provided them with a cane break zero offset tool. And unfortunately, these soldiers chose to just kind of brush me off because they weren't a fan of me. Well, long story short, all of these soldiers went to go shoot the U.S. Army rifle qualification, and all of them failed. That means they couldn't even hit 23 targets. So then, when they came back to me and told me how they did, I got a whole bunch of, oh yeah, the targets were fucked up. The goddamn, you know, might as well have just said swirly wins or whatever. It doesn't matter. But that's just one of many examples of me trying to help people and people just going, I don't like that guy. I'm not going to listen to him. And that's fine. You can choose to be fucked up. That is your prerogative. But if I'm telling you something, if I'm giving you free information that people have literally paid me to give them, maybe you should at least consider it. All right, so what's going on here is I have taken my 12-inch AR-15 upper receiver, 
and I've taken the bolt carrier group and the charging handle out because it's real fucking hard to look down the bore when that shit's in the way. And I have slapped this Primary Arms 1 to 6 ACSS um, LPVO on the top of it. Now, this gun has not been bore sighted yet. Um, sometimes you get lucky and you're already pretty close to bore sighted, which is what you're trying to achieve really with your bore sight is to just be kind of close so that whenever you fire your first rounds, then you can do your fine adjustments based off of shot. I have a target downrange at 80 yards. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look down my bore and I'm going to line that up with the center of the target. And then I'm gonna raise my head straight up, not moving anything. And I'm gonna look at the reticle and see what adjustment I need to make to make the reticle and the bore in line with each other. So I'm gonna take my scope caps off. This is also a little bit easier whenever you have a, a solid um, uh, base for the back of it. Like if you can just like rest the gun solidly on something and just look down and up through it, it makes it a lot easier. All right. So I'm lined up on the center of the target through the bore. I'm not going to move the rifle or the upper receiver, whatever you want to call it. And you know, it's not perfect, but it looks like it's already on paper. But, let's get it a little closer, just for you guys. I would say I need to move the reticle. The reticle needs to move to the left. So that means that you do the opposite of the movement that you would normally do to move your point of impact. I went a little too far. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the charging handle in, and then I'm going to put the bolt carrier back in, and then I'm going to put the lower receiver back on it. I'm going to fire a group at the target. And then I'm going to go down range and take a look and figure out what adjustments I need to make from there. Now, to be fair, normally I would not go down range uh, for confirmation or adjustment or anything like that because most of the time I don't use BDC reticles like this. I have an angular unit of measure built into my reticle and I can make my adjustments based off of that. But... For you guys, this is the way I'm going to do it. For today's test, I am using the 77 grain Sierra Match King loaded up by AAC. One of the most important factors when zeroing, in my expert opinion, is stability. All right, let's go down range and take a look at how close we are to zeroed. All right, guys, so as you can see, we started off with a fresh target. My point of aim was the very center of the page. And the reason that I do that is because it gives you the maximum amount of room for error. So if I was throwing shots way ass over here, but I was aiming at this target, that would be completely off paper. One of the very helpful things about using a target like this is these squares are one inch. So they're one inch by one inch. And what you can do with that information is adjust your shot group based off of that and your distance to target. So typically this would be set up at 100 yards. And if that were the case, then I would go, okay, my point of impact needs to come up one inch or two clicks on my scope because it's half MOA adjustments. And I would say a 
based off of the center of this, I would move it one click to the left or a half MOA to the left. I know somebody's going to jump on here and say an inch, an MOA is not one inch at 100 yards. I know it's 1.0472 and that's fine that you want to correct me. That's your personality, whatever. But just know that I understand the difference and I know how minute of a change that makes. So I have made the appropriate adjustments on my scope. I have gone up two clicks and left one click. I'm going to take one round of 77 Grain Sierra Match King AAC ammunition. I'm going to load it into the gun. I'm going to put in my hearing protection because that's important. <clears throat> I'm going to find a fine point of aim, which, you know what, I'll actually go for the center, uh, which is what I was aiming for before. No, it's not a fine enough point of aim. Alright, let's go down range and check it out. Alright guys, so because in that reticle I have a chevron as my point of aim, the tip of a chevron. What I like to do is I like to aim at the bottoms of these diamonds. So what I did was I aimed at the bottom of this diamond right here. And as you can see, my round impacted right there. So about a, a quarter of an inch to the left and an eighth of an inch high. So I'd say that's zeroed. And I'm going to leave that alone. I hope you guys found the video informative and helpful and get out there and suck today's dick.